move that image over and we'll do the second one which is going to be the fork the spoon's a bit more trickier um, the fork is a very similar method as we did before uh, so let's just get into it Now, because this um, is quite symmetrical, I'm going to start to use the handles on here as well as I go along. So, start to scale that out. G, pull it out. Scale. G, pull it out. Scale. And even though I'm in the perspective view, I'm still util utilizing the handles and restraining it to the uh, axes. So I might create additional information in there. So if later on, um, if we use the smooth mesh tool, it'll cling to it. A little bit better. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Alright, now I'll go in and use the insert edge loop tool again. Insert edge loop, and I think I'll do this from the top view just to make sure I've got the right sizes so I'll click every time we've got a prong coming out like so, looks pretty good go back to perspective go back to face mode Use the select tool Q shortcut key to grab it. Grab those guys and extrude them out. Like so. And I imagine, let's just go to the top view. I imagine they taper in a bit, little bit. Well, looks like the outer ones do it even more, so that looks good. But then I'll grab these guys, and if I use the scale tool, I'll scale in towards the center. Just give these guys a little nudge as well. Okay, that's looking good. Now, looking at my own fork in front of me, I realise that uh, forks aren't flat and they need a, bit, need a bit of curvature in them. So now I'm going to, um, even though I don't have the information exactly up here I'm going to start to build that curvature so I'll start with uh, inserting the edge loop tool um, if you want to add it to the shelf you can use the shift control and it will create a shortcut and I've already created that shortcut it's right there but I'll just show you shift control and then click and then you get the shortcut on the shelf that you're using so I'll just delete that one um, 
so if I click there, it brings up the insert edge loop tool and I need to start to add a bit more information where it's going to bend and everything looks a bit too fat at the moment but I'll just put in a couple more loops so we've got more area for it to curve around now this is a bit harder here There is a multi-cut tool that uh, we could use here, but just to keep things simple, we're going to use the insert edge loop tool, and looks pretty good. Um, and where else? I think that's that'll do for now. Okay, so I'm just going to hide the background again and grab scale, scale it down, still too thick, and also scale these guys down. Looks pretty good. Now just a bit of a quick tip, because I did it manually, they're a little bit off these points here, however I can quickly move them all into a line by snapping them to the grid using the X, X tool, X key, but if I just do it normally they're not going to um, uh, move in relationship to each other. So if I go X and click, oh, there, oh no, did that do it? Uh, maybe I have retain component spacing turned off already, yes. So if that was turned on, let me just undo that maneuver for a second. Let's go to the top view so we can see. So you can see how they're slightly not all aligned. By default it's turned on and if I was to press X what they will snap but everything else stays the same proportion away from each other. But if you turn that off and then go snap and they all line up, which is going to be handy. So, I think we'll just leave that there and go off to the side. I think we'll start by moving these guys up a little bit and then starting to. Move those guys and then start to move these guys up. Just eyeballing it looking at my reference and trying to get the same sort of shape close. So I 
ideally I'd have a photo, uh, but not today. So let's go perspective, check that out, see if we can uh, pick up with anything looking a bit dodgy. Yep. So what I might do is grab those guys and uh, the pivot points down there for some reason. So I'm going to go in here and go to uh, modify center pivot. And that's brought the pivot pat point up there and so then I can turn these guys to match the orientation that I want. Now I've got a shortcut already up here for that center pivot point that I placed in there. It's looking a bit strange. So go back. I think that's way too high. around as well. It's interesting. Whoops. I don't want to start rotating them in different axes. And G key is reactivating the set and pivot again. W to move. Still want to have the flow so it's not too harsh a change in direction. Okay, I think that'll do for now. Looks pretty good. So again, we're just dealing with the low poly version. Um, and we're going to build up the detail as we go along. So just checking it out on all the angles, making sure everything's good. And it looks pretty good to me. Okay. So you can see that you know we started to rack up a lot of uh, uh, history within our object. So just to clean things up, I'm going to go up to go into object mode first. Whoops. Go into object mode. Select. Select the object. I think what we could do is have another edge loop in here and make that not so sharp. There we go. Looks better. And probably the same down here because there is a fair bit of curvature going on.
bit of a disaster. Let's clean it up. Oops. It's definitely not what we want. Just trying to get it sort of uh, in line with the other ones. Like so. Double clicking selects the whole ring. Oops. Just going to go into Versi mode. A lot safer. That's a bit better. Okay. Alrighty. So that's right, that's what I was doing. I was going to grab it in object mode. Here in the channel box we can see all that history. I'm just gonna go and clean that up a bit. Edit, delete by type, delete history. 